Tonight, seven U.S. Capitol Police officers are suing former President Donald Trump, Roger Stone, and members of white supremacist organizations, accusing them of coordinating the attack on the Capitol on January 6th. The suit says the defendants participated in, quote, an unlawful effort to use force, intimidation, and threats to prevent Congress from certifying the results of the 2020 presidential election. This is at least the fourth lawsuit filed against Trump related to the January 6th insurrection. Tonight, I'm joined exclusively by one of the attorneys representing those seven police officers. Damon Hewitt is the president and executive director of the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights Under Law. Damon, great to have you. Um, can you lay out the sort of the, 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 the legal foundation for this lawsuit? Under what law are you suing them? What are you suing them for? Uh, well, look, we're, we're calling this exactly what it is, Chris. Uh, this is an inherently racist attempt to subvert democracy and to do so by force. And there's a very old federal statute, uh, the Ku Klux Klan Act, designed to address exactly this type of situation. And in case viewers are wondering, no, you don't have to uh, be wearing a, a disguise or a robe, what have you, uh, or a hood for, for this, kind of, this kind of crime. Uh, if you use, as you said, force, intimidation, threat to stop an officer from conducting, of the United States, from conducting his uh, and her due job and duties, either because of uh, who they are or to do it while they're trying to uh, carry out their jobs, then that is a violation of federal law. But more so, you can't just stand back and throw your hands up and say, uh, we didn't have anything to do with it when you were part of the conspiracy all along. If you know what's about to happen, you see it happening, and you don't do anything to stop it, that's a crime as well. And those are the two main statutes that we're using under federal law to file this lawsuit. Yeah, the Ku Klux Klan Act, which is uh, uh, from the Reconstruction era, 1871, of course, when the when the Klan was using violence, intimidation, and terrorism to disrupt democracy, multiracial democracy in the South. Um, as you allege in the lawsuit, defendants, meaning the folks that you are suing, violated the Ku Klux Klan Act, which was designed to prevent precisely the kinds of politically and racially motivated violence they caused and committed on January 6th. What's the burden you have to show here about their involvement? Well, look, what we have to show is that there was actually a conspiracy among these individuals. And I think the paper trail shows that. Uh, a lot of this is available, frankly, in the public domain because of great reporting uh, like yours and your colleagues. But we've also conducted a very thorough investigation and demonstrate throughout the complaint how all of this aligns. It aligns through the tweets uh, from Trump and the like. It aligns from the public statements from these individuals uh, leading up to uh, the event of January 6th, the insurrection, but also long before that as well. All of this falls in line. All of these actors were working in common. They may not have been in the same uh, meeting, huddling together, but they're all related and are all of a piece. I want to play for you um, some of the emotional testimony from one of the officers who was there that day, Harry Dunn, who testified before that committee on its inaugural day, and then ask you about the officers uh, that are uh, part of this lawsuit and how it came together. Take a listen. Once the building was cleared, I went to the rotunda to recover with other officers and share our experiences from what happened that afternoon. I sat down on a bench in the rotunda with a friend of mine who was also a black Capitol Police officer and told him about the racial slurs I endured. I became very emotional and began yelling, how the blank could something like this happen? Is this America? I began sobbing. Officers came over to console me. I know the officers involved in this have been, many have been wrestling with the aftermath, uh, both physically and emotionally and, and, and psychologically. And I also know that there, there are folks who are very much um, wary of, 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 of being perceived as political actors. How did this lawsuit come, came about and why did these seven officers decide to join the suit? Well, look, first is to be clear, these officers are just regular folk. You know, uh, they are long timers on this Capitol Police Force. They're not fly by nights. You know, a couple have over 30 years of service. Uh, some of them are military veterans, some are parents, uh, come from, you know, a diverse uh, set of backgrounds. So they're stalwarts uh, at doing their jobs just like Lieutenant Byrd uh, said and is. Uh, but these individuals have been waiting and waiting for the usual processes to work. They're waiting for legal processes to work. It's slow and it's a grind in terms of criminal prosecutions. Uh, they waited for political processes to work. And those are slow as well, but if you believe some of the politicos, there was no insurrection at all. 
And so really, frankly, Chris, they're just fed up. Uh, they're fed up with uh, having sacrificed, having stood on that line and not being appreciated. They're fed up uh, with the notion that this could all happen again because the story, the narrative is being subverted before their very eyes. They want Americans to know the truth about what they endured, but more importantly, they want Americans to know the truth about how fragile our democracy is and what it takes to defend it.